Hello, brothers and sisters. Brother Trey here again. Um, this uh, video is uh, might be kind of conf or, um, controversial. Um, it comes from um, the Apocrypha, which was um, originally in the King James Version, um, 1611. And some of the is one of the out of one of the books that was taken out of the Bible. It's not canonized, um, but um, my thoughts are is um, with them taking it out. You know, Bible in the Book of Revelation says um, talks about. Well, hold on a second. Let me pull it up for you. Um, in my Bible. If any er, Revelation chapter twenty two, verse nineteen says, "If any man," or starting at verse eighteen says, "For I testify unto every man that hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in the in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of this book of the of the book of this prophecy." God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. So they took those, uh, they took the, those ch books out. Now it's kind of, it's controversial and, you know, I don't want to add anything. Um, but, you know, I've been reading this. I just felt like maybe there's something that's missed. Maybe there's something, some hidden mystery that we've missed in the scripture because it hasn't been available or it's been available, but nobody reads it. Everybody wants to stick to the 66 books of the Bible. That's going to be controversial. And it, um, I may people may not agree with this, but, um, you know, you know, it's, I keep hearing reformation reset. Um, all those words coming from the voice of the prophets, you know, reform, ref, reformation, you know, I think Martin Luther, you know, he wrote the 95 thesis and he, and he nailed to the church door. And if you don't know about Martin Luther, uh, he was a priest. He was, um, and, uh, he wrote 95 thesis and he nailed it to, the um, castle church in Wittenberg, Germany, um, saying they need to change some practices. Now you can, I don't remember all of it. Of course, I, I grew up as in the Lutheran church, but anyway, um, he also start. He also was one of them that started to uh, write out copies of the Bible by hand. So, um, when we talk about Reformation, he's, uh, he started the, the Protestant movement, the, what most people, most of the church would call the Reformation of the church. So, and you'll go back to that time. So, um, if we go back, if we go back to some things that we missed or what we're taking out, maybe there's, uh, Hidden mystery that maybe we missed that could be very important. You know, people say this isn't canonized, but for what I've seen, there's still prophets in here. God still speaks. God's people are still in here. Um, and it points to Messiah, literally. Like, they're even part, if it is mentioned, of jesus the son of god in here so um you can read it for yourself and decide for yourself you know study for yourself would be approved not just what everybody says but you know just read it for yourself when you can be make the decision but anyway uh i want to go from 
here. It's uh, the book is called The Wisdom of Solomon. I mean, it probably could be a continuation of one of the books of Solomon, like this, not the Song of Sol Solomon, but um, you know, um, Ecclesiastes or something like that. I, I think that's the book of Solomon, one of the books of Solomon. It shows, it just shows his, literally what his title is called, shows some of his wisdom. You know, like, kind of like Proverbs or um, one of those. But it's chapter six, it's, and um, it reads, Hear, therefore, o, o ye kings, and understand, learn ye that be judges of the ends of the earth. Give ear that rule the people and glory in the multitudes of nations. For power is given you of the Lord and sovereignty from the highest, who shall try your works and search out your counsels. Because being masters of his kingdom, you have not judged aright, nor kept the law, nor walked after the counsel of God. Horribly and speedily shall he come from come upon you, for a sharp judgment shall be to them that be in high places. For mercy will soon pardon the meanest, but mighty men shall be, be mightily tormented. For he which is Lord over all shall fear no man's person, neither shall he stand in awe of any man's greatness. For he shall... For he hath made the small and great, and cares for all alike. But a sore trial shall come upon the mighty. Unto you, therefore, O kings, do I speak, that you may learn wisdom and not fail away, or not fall away. For they that keep holiness holily shall be judged holy, and they that have learned such things shall find what to answer. Wherefore, set your affection upon my words, desire them, and ye shall be instructed. Wisdom is glorious and never fades away. Yea, he is, he, she is easily seen of them that love her, meaning wisdom, and found of, found of such as that seek her. She prevents them that desire her in making herself first known unto them. Whoso seeks her early shall have no great travail. So, for he shall find her sitting at his doors. To think, therefore, upon her is perfection of wisdom. And whoso, whoso watches for her shall quickly be without care. For she goes about seeking such as are worthy of her, showing herself favorably unto them in the ways, and meets them, meets them in every thought. For the very pure, true, for the very true beginning of her is the desire of discipline, and the care of discipline is love. And love is the keeping of her laws, and giving heed unto her laws is the assurance of incorruption. And corruption makes us near. And incorruption makes us near unto God. Therefore, the desire of wisdom brings to a king brings to a kingdom. If you do delight, be then if you delight, be in thrones and scepters, O ye kings of the people, honor wisdom that ye may reign forever. As for wisdom, what is she, and how she came up? I will tell you, and will not hide mysteries from you, but will seek her out. From the beginning of her nativity, and bring the knowledge of her into the light, and will not pass over the truth. Neither will I go with consuming envy, for such a man shall live no fellowship with wisdom. But the multitude of the wise is the welfare of the world, and a wise king is the upholding of the people. Receive, therefore, instruction through my words, and it shall do you good. Now, those are the words of of Solomon, King Solomon, who asked for wisdom from the Lord. So, therefore, he received 
the wisdom of God. And you can see how great, how much great wisdom he has in just this little chapter. He's telling leaders and kings how to rule their nation. And saying best that if they seek after wisdom, they can rule their nation better. And it benefits their nation. Now, much can be said about the United States. But it's not just the United States. All nations, leaders need to seek after the wisdom. But the beginning of all, of all wisdom is the fear of the Lord. So, therefore, we must first, as leaders, fear the Lord. It's the beginning of all wisdom. But it is just, it seems like that right now in the United States. Uh, there are the remnant, there are God's people who do fear the Lord. There are more and more who are becoming leaders in, in our nation. But the highest seat just doesn't seem to fear the Lord and he's continuing what he's doing. But he's going to have to answer for what he's doing. And what they're doing in secret. They will have to answer. If not now. At, but at the but they'll have to ask, answer at the judgment seat of Christ. On judgment day. So. Therefore. After reading this chapter. Judge you for yourselves. Of the wisdom of Solomon. Does it seem like something Solomon would say? And does it seem worthy be to have been Holy Spirit inspired through Solomon himself? Like it is the wisdom of the Lord that was running through Solomon. Does it sound like something Solomon would say? Because he had great wisdom. And it was, wisdom was known throughout the land. To judge for yourselves. And seek wisdom out for yourselves. In Jesus' name.